So we were talking about how to play a character who has flaws, who doesn't have flaws. But how do we create a character who's believable? A character who has a sense of palpability that we can really connect to. That's what we're going to discuss today. Hello, I'm GR, this is Player Base, which is a channel about ludology, the study of the dynamics of play, and in the series about tabletop role-playing games, we're focusing on character building and character development. And in this instance today, we're going to talk about how do you make a character as a PC or as a DM or a GM, how do you make a character who is believable? one that you can connect to and play and other people can relate to. Not necessarily like or identify with, but relate to, and that's a very different thing. What do I mean by the difference between some character who's believable and relatable versus a character who's likable or unlikable? Well, think about a guy like the Grinch, right? The Grinch is really relatable. Not necessarily likable, although some people like him, but immediately you know exactly what this guy is about and you also understand and sympathize to a certain extent with why he's like that. That's a relatable character and it's also, even in the fantastical Dr. Seuss world of the Grinch, it's a really believable character because the stresses and the forces, even in that magical or semi-magical realm with these little fairies and gnomes that he lives with and him being some kind of goblin, you understand within the, the accepted reality of that world the tensions that he lives under would cause anybody to behave and feel the way that he behaves and feels. So if we take a character and we start it off with a character who's fantastical, let's say it's like a half minotaur librarian. And that half minotaur librarian who works as a... Uh, in the book acquisitions department of a uh, magical college, his primary or their primary uh, form of adventuring is going out and finding rare books. And that leads them to all kinds of caves and dungeons and hijinks. But that's your character. Now, this character may be likable. They may not be likable. But they can be relatable if you work within the framework of, well, a person who spends their entire life looking out for rare books will have certain characteristics. And those characteristics embodied in like a giant, super strong, you know, minotaur or half minotaur, that will relate some of the, the dynamics and also the framework on how the world is going to relate to them and the kind of choices that they're going to have to make. And when you just sit with that, whatever you come up with is going to be humanly reasonable. You know, you don't have to be H.L. Mencken in order to come up with, you know, something that is really well written. I pulled H.L. Mencken off the top of my head. I didn't want to say Hemingway. I didn't want to say Dostoevsky. And H.L. Mencken was the first guy who showed up. I hope, like, it's a uh, gentleman from, for blondes. No? Okay. Anyway. Um, the point is, <laughs> getting back to the point that you came here for, the point is that making a character who's believable, who's relatable, whether or not they're affable, which is to say whether or not you or, or the players or the other players or the game master's characters likes them, that's not so much important. What's important is just sitting with, hmm, okay, so this guy's doing this, and, th and he'd be like, because, you know, that same librarian character, if they were a gnome, would have a different set of choices to make. The, the world would relate to them differently. Or a high elf right? Think about that. Think about it. So the book, Rare Books Acquisitions Department of this magical college has a half minotaur, a gnome, and a high elf. You already have in your mind's eye a, a clear idea of who those three characters are. Because you already know intuitively to some extent how the world is going to relate to them. And you just take that and then that's the framework for how you find that voice but also how you make that character believable for you. Because it's a lot easier to play, especially when you're doing ridiculous things like levitating and holding up magical swords that can talk and all that other kind of stuff. When the character doing that has real lines of force in their emotional and psychic dynamic. And so it's more engaging. 
and we're going to talk about more about why it's engaging and why it's worth it tomorrow. But for today, I think that's enough out of me. I'm GR's as player base, and uh, mention in the comments if uh, any of this made sense to you, and we will talk 